Yeah, happy birthday. Yeah, thank you. How are you guys doing? Do you want some CNET swag? How are you guys doing? <laughs> Good. I'm going to go, I'm actually going to go, I think the net book for me is totally a game changer. Like, I, I love the idea that there's such an accessible computer. Like, it's, I feel like I didn't see it coming at all, and the next thing I knew, I was being able to say to people, oh, you can totally get a really tiny book-sized laptop for $400. And everybody who hears that is like, oh, I want that. There's no reason for me not to get that. And I think it's a huge hardware revolution, partly because it's so accessible, and also because it's sort of changing the idea of how much computing power we need. Tom's heard this like 50 times, and I apologize. Um, but it's, you know, for a long time, we've all been trying to buy, like, Jaguars and Bentleys and Bugatti Veyrons, like the most powerful computers that we can find. They make, they make laptops now? Oh, yeah. Sweet. They cost um, $90,000. <laughs> well, don't, don't tell me that, because I'm, I'm, I'm almost on the verge of buying the Kindle, too. I'm, I'm looking at it. Get the Kindle. Get the Kindle. I don't know. It depends on what you want to do. Like, as just the device that it is for reading books, I mean, I'm pretty excited about the Kindle, I have to admit. It is more convenient than opening up a laptop on its side. <laughs> with, with everything in our, our current structures going digital, all of our history, all of our records, you know, if you think back about ancient civilizations, they had things written down, they had them on stone tablets. What happens when the power goes out and we don't have anything anymore? You know, I went to the, like, several years Wait, ago. Wait, is the power going out? Yeah. Hey, you guys are talking about now. the singularity so Ragnarok. and the, the robots yeah. are coming. Right. They're going to turn yeah. our power off. <laughs> but that doesn't help Definitely still needs if power. the power goes out. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it kind of reminds me of Memoirs Found in a Bathtub by Stanislav Lem, where at the beginning of the book, the premise is that a, a, a kind of a, a virus came through and destroyed all the paper in the world, and so society collapsed. Because we we do everything on paper. We do, you know, paperwork is, is everything. And once there was no more paper, society couldn't function anymore. So we, we're sort of, not that we're the paperless society by any stretch, but we've moved the dependence on paper so that if paper went away, we could turn to our computers. But if power went away, we couldn't print anything out anymore. Yeah. So I think, yeah, we're screwed. So right? pretty much we're screwed. <laughs> well, but then we'll return to oral histories. And that'll be great. We'll have a little a storyteller society where people travel around, like, in person and talk to each other. It'll be crazy. Yeah, that, that never happens anymore. I know, right? Yeah. Weird. Because I'm not necessarily waiting for this on the web, but to me, I've been waiting for years for nanotechnology to really take off. Like, I think we're just on the verge of seeing incredible, like, incredible world-changing developments with nanotechnology. Singularity. The singularity, for sure. <laughs> And once that comes, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> like, I think, but I think there's so many possibilities in terms of fabrication and virtual reality that that, to me, is like, in 10 years, everything could potentially be totally different. I kind of think we'll have a shakeout um, where a lot of these channels have been free writing. I mean, if you notice, your cable channels are changing names and changing formats like crazy unless they're the big successful ones, unless they're CNN or ESPN, you've got much music becomes fused, becomes baloney, becomes, you know, like, you know, goes from being, you know, you got the sci-fi channel showing horror films and monster movies, and pretty soon they're going to change their name to Universe Channel or what, you know, I mean, it's because there's this closed market and there's these deals that uh, the big networks can make that say, like, you've got to carry my DIY channel if you want to get my HGTV because I, you know, I'm pushing this network. That getting blasted apart so i'm thinking and i'm just thinking this right now actually um a lot of these kind of lower tier channels are the ones that are going to die mm -hmm. because there's just not going to be enough money to go around for all of them and you'll still see the hbo the espn the cnn the major networks still surviving uh, in a new ecosystem, and it's going to be broken down between the pay per channel, the $10 for the HBO, mm -hmm. or the streaming with ads version. Um, it's, yeah. it's one or the other. I pay more attention to the ads on Hulu than I do to the ads on TV, because mm -hmm. either I'm DVRing it and fast-forwarding through, or when they come on TV, I know it's going to be a three-minute long break, so I walk away or mm -hmm. pick up something to read or look at Twitter. Whereas on Hulu, I'm like, okay, I know this is going to be short. And the ads are better. I don't know if you've watched the Hulu ads, but they're funnier. Yeah. They, they know, like, we really need to keep people entertained to get them through this break. Right. Plus the stuff that if I have the TV on, there's a good, there's a pretty decent chance that I'm, 
I just turn the TV on and I'm actually in another room. Whereas if I'm streaming something on Hulu, it's because I really want to watch it. I have chosen this thing. I've blocked out the time to do it. I'm specifically engaged with that content. Like, that, to me, should be worth more money. They call it stacking. They do? Yeah, I heard that on Twitter. I feel, at least in terms of Kiva, like, the great thing about it is that it's so direct. It's not one of those things where you just give money to an And even if you look on, you know, the charity watch site and find out that they're a good charity or whatever, it doesn't – it's not as one-on-one. And Kiva's, like, an organization that makes a significant difference and then does it on an individual level, and that's kind of what we like. That's what yeah. I like about it. Anyway. I like that you can just go into Kiva and pick, you know, I want to help these – ladies in Mexico with their their bodega that they're, mm-hmm. you know, trying to get going, uh, selling candy and yarn to the, to the village and, and help them out.